World Labs hit the scene and I saw this video of them recreating these awesome rooms from source imagery and I thought I have to recreate my kitchen. I have created a 3D model of my kitchen so many different ways using 3D Gaussian splatting, 3D Gaussian race tracing, using photogrammetry. I had to try this world model. I had to try World Labs to see how well I could take these eight images that I'm showing on the screen and turn it into my kitchen. So let's jump into World Labs. I ran it, it went really fast and see how well it could do it. Okay, so if you've not been in World Labs before, this is an interface. I've only used it twice. I just wanted to get out here with my first impressions, but uh, I did one with a single image. It didn't turn out great. I learned something, upgraded to the pro account because it is $1 right now. Everyone, if you wanna try this, I think it's still a dollar, a dollar to be able to do like 25 generations at do all the pro. So let's take a look at the results. So if you dive into the detailed instructions on how to use this, they tell you you can upload up to eight reference images. I use this. I use my trusty iPhone 17 Pro with the ultra wide because I wanted to make sure I got good exposure and really wide shots. And I thought that would be an easy camera to test out with because it just is going to magically give me a good view. So let's see those results. I can I can click view and it should jump me into the world. I will link this world into the description of this video so you can go look at it yourself. But, um, okay, the first thing I notice is it is my kitchen, but it is not my house. So it did some things really good. It did some things not so good. Um, let's start out with the cabinets. So again, I'm gonna put a reference photo up on the screen here of my cabinets. Those look like it. Those don't look like it. I don't, I don't know what it's doing here. It's, it's obviously using like a world model and it's trying to predict this scene. And I notice it does some creative liberties, but overall, I mean, it nailed the rest of them. Things get a little crazy there, but I could say how good was my source image of that area? Probably not very good, but overall it's the right, I think like the right color. Um, it's the right shape of the room here. I had this kick out room here. Even this arch area is accurate, but then eh, this was not so much, but I didn't have a lot of images of that. So overall I thought, well, it got the layout pretty darn close. But things get kind of weird as I'm moving around and you're seeing like, again, the sink. I thought that was, that was an interesting design choice. I had a plant behind that sink that was good. Um, I think this was a bowl of apples that I had that turned into candy. I don't know. Uh, I had tables and chairs. I did not have a room back there. I did not at all, nor is there stairs there in my house. So none of that looks right. And also in the image, so I'm gonna put it again on my screen. There is not a blank space right here. I have a computer. I was expecting that to show up. So that was like the biggest surprise. That or the fact that they put a microwave up there. And if you look at my pictures, that is in fact my cat. So one last thing I wanna point out is that for some reason it did not get the cabinet, my kitchen island cabinet, that was, that was totally missed. I don't know why. Again, I'm gonna put some source images up here in the corner as you're watching this and you'll see that that in fact was pretty well captured. So why, why this whole, I don't know. I thought that was pretty weird. I'm not going to knock it, though. I mean, this is V1. This came out. It's live. I wish I had this tiled backsplash because this looks better than mine. Um, and it's pretty good. All right, so I also want to point out a few other things that I noticed when I've created this generation and a few other worlds that I, I was looking at when you go look at other people's world models that are public. And I found some interesting things they do you make these worlds that might be really fascinating to you, but also have some major implications if you want to use this for something like I want to use it as an environment for training robots in Isaac Lab. So let's take a look at that and see like how really immersive these are, how big these scenes are, because you'll be kind of surprised how much there is um, doing some optical illusions. Let's jump back to my results. Okay, so the first thing is, this looks pretty like a pretty big area I can go in. There's a whole room over there I can go into. Looks like I can go back there. Um, a little bit back there. But in reality, I can only really go in this kitchen area, like around this island I can go into. Uh, I can't go everywhere. I can't go in there. There's another side room. Again, I saw none of this. I'm 
shocked that it came up with this. Looks pretty good. But if I go in here, all of a sudden, there's actually no world. It's just an illusion to look like there's a room here. And if you look straight down, you notice the floor doesn't look so good. But if, you know, I, I go straight and then look down, the floor looks good. So you can tell it, like, it looks good from an angle, but if you come over it, it goes, it goes downhill. So same with the rest of this. So this whole room is basically a big rectangle. Like I'm moving around this rectangle right now. I can go in here. I look down, the floor looks good. And go around this part of the rectangle. For some reason, this part isn't good, but the rest of it looks good. If I look down, that looks good. But if I get outside that rectangle I just navigated in, like if I come over here, it feels like I'm still in the room, but this table falls apart. Uh, the floor starts to, to fall apart the further I go that way. And I, this isn't a room at all as well. This is just an illusion. So they're doing some of these interesting tricks to make it feel like you have this expansive world you've made, but you really kind of have like a shoebox shaped room in which then I can navigate in. I can't even come over here again. Let's come over here, look down. The floor doesn't look good. I'm not sure if there's any good geometry here when we export the SPZ. We're going to take a look at that. Um, but overall, I mean, is this cool? I think this is great. The implications I had for like using this in Isaac Lab as a room to navigate uh, is that if I get low, how do things work? Let's say I want to train a robot dog. It's about here. Uh, do these cabinets still look good here versus up here? This was a shock. This actually looks good coming down here, even if I was like a dog, except for this part that's missing, which we're not really going to count. This all looks good from even a low angle, which, which was to me a huge shock because I thought when you got low like this, like I'm down here, everything was going to look terrible. Same with going up high. Like let's say I'm a really high robot here. Looking down, everything looks pretty good. So again, I think there's this kind of like area in which I can navigate vertically and horizontally. That's kind of a box. And if I come way out of the model, you can kind of see it. It's, it's almost like this area here. I'm going to maybe draw a box on the screen. I wonder if I have some drawing tools I can use. Like right in here, this area right there, that is where I can navigate. Other than that, when if I get outside of these like side rooms aren't really navigable rooms, I can go in and get, get good detail. I know there might be more modes that will help me get a more expansive scene. We'll see. But uh, this is interesting. I mean, eight pictures, and I had this in, I mean, I don't know how long it took. Put it this way. Upload the images, and then within, uh, I, then I went and had a, a, a probably, I think, like a five, ten minute phone call. And when I got back, it was ready to go. So fast enough that I didn't know when it was done because it was that fast. Um, so one thing I want to look at here as well is there's some open and create. There's a studio, things like that. That will be a follow-up video. This is just seeing how well it did this one scene. But I did want to show you, you can share it. You can you can copy the link, the VR link. The co uh, I don't have a VR headset. I get nauseous in them. You can then download. And I think this is interesting. There's a 360 pano image that doesn't really help me. But there is a couple different splat options. There's a low res and a larger one. And then uh, a high quality mesh GLB. A collider mesh GLB. Uh, so let's, I'm going to download a couple of these assets and see what happens. Let's just download the splats one. I don't know if it instant. Ah, yeah, I instantly got it. Let's see if that uses any of my credits. Yeah, I think it used some of my credits, but that's fine. I have quite a bit. Uh, let's go to super splat and see what that looks like. Cause that's kind of like where we're headed to look. So here we go. Bang. It, it loaded it. Um, I forgot I can't use the WAS keys on this. Hey, this looks good for being super splat and everything. Uh, this looks really good. I noticed I don't see nearly as much of the room. So when I'm using um, when I'm using World Labs, it must have like a really uh, wide frame of scale. Also, I'm hard time navigating the scene. It just makes me wonder what the what the size is and everything. Because I haven't, I haven't looked to see what the scale of the output is. Is like, 
this, you know, two foot across, or is it like two inches across? Something that we'll have to look as I get further into this. So this is interesting. Uh, let me let me check out another asset. Let's go back to marble and go click to download. Let's go look at uh, the high quality mesh. Let's see our quality mesh generation. High quality jet mesh generation can take up to an hour and cost 3,500 credits. Yeah, I'm going to wait on that one because that takes a lot of credits. But let's try one more. Let's, I'm going to wait on it until let's hear with the collider mesh. What does that give us? So we have this collider mesh. I'll be really interested what it looks like right in here. And so I'm probably going to have to open up Mesh Lab for that and take a look. Okay. Again, it makes a collider mesh. Uh, this is interesting. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at. Maybe I have this turned upside down. There it is. There's my collider mesh. So this is my kitchen. Um, it looks like maybe there's a floor area in here. Uh, that's the other room with the Christmas tree. What I'm worried about with this collider mesh is what it did right here. Like... If I wanted to navigate even this small kitchen area with a robot in Isaac Lab, uh, this would have to be modified. I would have to redo this all myself. Uh, it would work somewhat over here, but I also know it has this, this curve. So anyways, there's a lot to explore. I just wanted to see, could I recreate my kitchen with eight images using this world model? I would say it recreated a similar kitchen, maybe a digital cousin of my kitchen, but it didn't create my kitchen it created a different version of the kitchen and i'm going to deep dive into this and do a more comprehensive review in a follow-up video next week when i get to try this i'm going to try capturing my kitchen with a video with a 360 panorama image i'm going to try all the different tricks and we're going to see if we can get this kitchen figured out with that hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something about world labs marble and i'll see you guys in the next video